name is Ranger Arlene, and I'm here at Hill Country State Natural Area. And today we're going to do Reading with the Ranger. So the story um, that we've picked today is The Secret Life of the Little Brown Bat, written by Lawrence Pringle and illustrated by Kate Gurinsky. The sun has set, a July sky dims, then grows darker. Inside the old barn, the light fades fast. Time to wake up! Otis yawns and stretches a wing. His eyes wink open. Otis hangs upside down, holding onto a wooden beam. His toenails, oh sorry. Otis hangs upside down, holding onto a wooden beam with his toenails. He isn't quite ready to fly into the night. First, he takes time to broom. Otis uses his tongue, teeth, and the hooked claws on his thumb to clean his fur and wings. Bats are Earth's only flying mammals, and they take very good care of their wings. Bat wings are made of thin skin that is supported by long arm bones and even longer finger bones. Otis's wing, wings extend from his fingertips all the way back to his legs. Thin skin also stretches between his legs and tail. Otis is a young bat. Just a few weeks ago, he was a pup nursing milk from his mother. When Otis and his mother slept in the daytime, he snuggled under one of her wings. They lived in a secret place, a big hollow tree, with several other mom bats and their babies in a nursery colony. Young and old, they were all little brown bats, one of the most common kind or species of bats in North America. When his mother flew out into the night to hunt for food, Otis waited. He slept close to the other bat pups. Sometimes they wrestled and played, as all young mammals do. When his mother returned, she made a squeak chirp call. Otis answered with a whining sound. She knew him by his voice and by the scent of his fur. She always found Otis, just as the other mothers always found their own pups. Otis grew fast. Just three weeks after being born, he spread his wings and began to fly a little bit. Soon, he was as big as his mother. He learned to catch insects and eat. Oh. He learned to catch insects to eat and no longer nursed milk. The mothers tried their best to give their pups a good start in life. Then, in just a few nights' time, all the moms and the young bats flew off to find their new homes. Now Otis is on his own. He hangs out with other young male little brown bats in an abandoned barn. This is where, this is their summer home or roost. No one knows about their secret hideout. After licking some dust from his wings, Otis is ready to fly. He lets go with his toe, he lets go with his toe claws, spreads his wings and flutters out of the barn. He is thirsty. He flies to a little pond Otis swoops down, flies just above the surface, and gulps some water. Near the pond, Otis flies higher over a meadow. There he seems to dance in the air. With his amazingly flexible wings, Otis zigs and zags, flutters and dives, hovers and swoops, dips and swerves. Then he makes a quick turn and does it all again and again. Otis is not playing. He is hunting. He is finding, chasing, catching, and eating insects. He sends out high-pitched clicking sounds that humans cannot hear, called ultrasonic sounds. 
He listens for echoes from the clicks that bounce back to his ears. From the echoes, his brain makes a picture of what lies ahead in the dark. This is called echolocation. In an instant, Otis can detect a flying insect ahead. He can also tell its size, speed, and distance. That insect is in big trouble. As Otis flies, he sends about as Otis flies, he sends out about 10 clicks a second. That changes when echoes tell him that the small moth is flying just ahead. He sends out a quick burst of ultrasounds, almost 200 clicks a second. This is called a feeding or a terminal buzz. Otis zooms straight towards his target. He snags the moth with one wing, then flips it into the skin between his legs. He bends his head down, grabs the moth, chews and swallows. This takes just a second or two. He keeps flying, sending out more ultrasonic clicks, listening, hunting. Otis darts, dives, turns, and twists, catching beetles, crane flies, gnats, mayflies, midges, mosquitoes, and moths. With a full belly, he flies home to his roost. He still sends out ultrasounds. Echoes that bounce back help him fly safely. He dodges wires, tree branches, or other obstacles in the air. Inside the barn, Otis does a flying trick he has learned well. He heads straight toward a wall or ceiling, then flips in the air, turns upside down, and grabs the wood with his toenails, a perfect bat landing. As summertime flies by, Otis learns to be a better hunter. Some nights, new kinds of flying insects appear. One evening in late August, Otis hears echoes that tell him there is a moth flying up ahead. He sends out more clicks and speeds towards, and speeds towards it, but the moth vanishes. It is a tiger moth, an insect that can hear ultrasounds. Tiger moths and green lace wings are two kinds of flying insects that listen for bat clicks. When they hear them, these insects may swerve, dive, or make ultrason ultrasonic clicks of their own. The moth clicks interfere with bat clicks, allowing the insects to escape. All summer long, Otis and the other bats feel safe in their secret home, the old barn. No raccoons or other predators can reach the bats as they sleep high overhead. Outdoors, Otis stays alert for danger. Sometimes, echoes bounce back to him from something big but harmless, another bat or a giant moth. Moonlit nights can be especially dangerous for a bat that might be seen by a night-flying predator. Tonight, there is a full moon. Suddenly, Otis senses something very big coming toward him. He folds his wing, he folds his wings and drops like a stone. Then he flies fast and escapes from the owl. Every night, Otis and the other bats eat a lot. They store fat in their bodies, getting ready for winter, when there will be no insects in the air. Before that time comes, Otis and the other bats will be in a deep sleep-like state called hibernation. On a chilly September night, Otis leaves the barn but does not hunt. Instead, he flies fast and true for many miles. The next day, he sleeps under the loose bark of a tree and then travels all through the day. I'm oh, sorry. The next day, he sleeps under the loose bark of a tree, then travels all through the night again. At dawn, he flutters into an opening in a rocky cliff, and then into a big room deep in the rocks. This is a secret cave where little brown bats gather. Both males and females live here, and Otis meets a female who becomes his mate. Otis and the other bats will hibernate until next spring. Then he will wake up, he will yawn, stretch, and clean his wings, 
Very hungry, Otis will fly out and hunt on a warm spring night. Lots of mosquitoes and other insects will be in big trouble. So thank you for joining me to uh, read The Secret Life of the Little Brown Bat.